Hello, in today's video, I will be showing you how to assemble and install the Z micro switch, as well as locating your bed inside the Voron V2.4 printer. So to put together the Z end stop assembly, you will need the printed housing, a deflanged 20 tooth gear, your five millimeter rod, your micro switch, and two M2 self tapping screws. Now, to go a little bit further, this is optional, but you can also add a JST connection, both male and female, and some wiring to make the wires connected to the Z end stop removable. So the first thing we're going to do is take our deflanged 20 tooth gear here, and we're going to press that into place. Like so. And then we are going to take our Omron micro switch. Now, for the micro switch, you need one without the hinge on it. If it does come with the hinge, if you ordered one with the hinge, you can uh, simply pry it off or you can order one without the hinge itself. Now when you go to install this, you're going to want it so that the button is centered on the 20 tooth gear. So we're going to put that into place. And then once the micro switch is installed, you're going to take a pair of needle nose pliers and you're just going to gently bend over the pins so that they sit below the bottom surface, and then you're going to take your M2 self-tapping screws and screw the micro switch into place. Now at this point, you could simply solder your wires to the two outer pins and move on to the next step. However, we are going to get a little bit fancy here and install a removable connection. So you will need a male and female JSD connection here. If you bought the JSD kit, it should come with these. And then we're going to take on the uh, female side here, we're going to take the pins and bend them upwards on the side that has the notches. This is so it clears the two M2 screw heads. And then we could install this using a VHB tape, for example. However, I actually don't have any extra on hand, so I'm just going to super glue this into place. So now once installed, we're going to need to solder up our connections. So now we are soldering simply one to one, two to two, three to three. So we'll take our soldering iron. And the first thing we're going to do is simply tin each connector, taking care not to melt the plastic. Now, if you bent your wires correctly, you may be able to simply solder bridge them together, like this middle one is here. And to be fair, the only reason we're really connecting this middle one is extra support. Now, if you cannot solder bridge, you can simply use a short piece of wire, uh, tin it, and then use the wire to bridge the connection. and then snip away the excess. And then do it again. Give it a visual inspection, make sure you got all good connections. Now you could take out a multimeter and go through and double check that everything has continuity. Uh, but we're going to skip that for now. So now we'll get the wire and crimp the connector on. Now while this is a three pin connector, we are only going to be putting the pins on the outer two sockets on the connector itself. And the reason for that is we are wiring the switch up for naturally closed. Now the reason we are wiring it up for naturally closed is we want this to have the ability to fail safe. And what that means is with a naturally closed circuit, that means electricity is running through it continuously. And when the switch is depressed, it breaks the circuit and it registers as a click. Now the reason this is fail safe is if, for example, you have a failed connection at some point, or a wire breaks or burns out, 
and the connection is interrupted, when the printer goes to home, it'll automatically think it hit the limit. So instead of continuously driving the gantry down into the bed, waiting for a switch to go off that will never go off, it'll fail safe and you will prevent a nozzle crash. So now that our wires are connected, the last thing we would do is install your five millimeter rod and just ensure that it does function. And with the end stop assembled, we can now mount it inside our printer. So at first, we're just gonna screw it to one of the bed support extrusions. And you're not gonna screw it down tight. And location doesn't really matter at this point because we're gonna be moving this. So just screw it in loosely near the back of the printer itself. There we go. And then once installed in the frame, we are going to take our gantry, move it all the way to Y maximum where the end stop would trigger. And looking from the side, we're going to position our Z switch underneath the nozzle. Like so. Now this is just a rough position for now. Once the printer is on, and you run your homing routine for X and Y for the first time, you may have to adjust this slightly as right now we don't have any power to the printer. So the trigger position for the end stop may shift slightly. However, for your first power on and for assembly, this is good enough. Now, one question that does come up quite often is how do I locate my bed? Your bed location is based off of your bed mounting extrusions and your end stop. So with your end stop at Y maximum, because the nozzle always needs to be able to hit this end stop, you're going to want your bed basically not touching the end stop because this will transfer heat into it and you don't want that because that will throw off your readings. So you're gonna move your bed back till it just touches the end stop and then you're going to move it forward so that there is an air gap between the bed and the end stop. And that is it. That is how you locate your bed. So now when you run your homing routine, X, Y, Z, it will home X, it will home Y. Your bed will be centered on the X axis because it is centered on the extrusions, which are centered on the frame. And then your principal Y is from the rear of this bed to your Y minimum. So you will have to go through and just ensure what your parameters are and that they are set correctly so that you are maximizing the available print volume. Now the only downside to doing it this way with the small air gap here is essentially we are sacrificing roughly from the rear of the bed to the center of your Z switch pin of print volume. So that is the one small sacrifice we do have to make to have a self tramming gantry. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask them in the comments below. If you would like to see more content such as this, don't forget to subscribe to the channel as well. I am currently doing a Voron 2.4 live stream on Saturday nights. So by subscribing, you'll make sure that you do not miss that. And also one thing, please don't forget to join the Voron Discord. Thank you for watching. Have yourselves a great day.